Hey folks, Gio here from the Red Letters Dialogues. Don't say that I did not tell you so. Finally, we have written proof of what I have been saying all along, that it was dubious that Brian Houston, Carl Lentz, Hillsong and Company did not know that Josh Canfield and Reed Kelly are homosexuals. And being so, they still allowed them to serve in a ministerial capacity in leadership roles in Hillsong, specifically in their New York City campus. Jonathan Merritt writes for the Washington Post and also for Huffington Post in their Gay Voices section. And it seems as if this article was uh, mass released uh, and published on different websites, uh, op-ed on the matter. And he goes on to state uh, that Josh Canfield participated in the campus in London and then helped to open the New York City campus, which seems to me an declaratory statement of what Carl Lentz had stated in a HuffPost Live interview when he stated that he has homosexual friends and that he would not take polarizing political positions as it pertains to the issue of homosexuality and homosexual marriage because he knows people that are going through that journey and implicitly attacking the veracity of the scriptures and denying what the Bible has to say about homosexual relationships, which is that they are an abomination unto the Lord, that they are sinful, and that any person that chooses to continue to indulge in their sins should not be called a Christian. Through this video, I'd like to do something slightly different. Instead of providing my own commentaries, uh, my own insights into what uh, these men intended to say through their joint statement, which is published via Josh Canfield's Twitter feed, and I will place the link down below so you can read it in its entirety. That way we will not be blamed for selectively editing or picking and choosing certain aspects and decontextualizing what uh, Josh Canfield and Reed Kelly have had to state, where they clearly state that from the very beginning, they had informed Hillsong New York City that they were homosexuals, and even then they allowed them to participate in leadership positions, which also casts doubt and uh, puts in uh, disrepute absolutely everything that Brian Houston has stated in two previous blog posts through and statements through Hillsong.com, meaning that he lied about the situation. And Jonathan Merritt further clarifies that they had informed Carl Lentz, the head pastor, lead pastor of New York City, about their oncoming engagement and that Lentz informed Houston and therefore they removed them from leadership positions. But he states that they, uh, Carl Lentz, gave them other roles to fill within the church. So uh, that uh, completely disproves what Houston has said, where he states that they are not a gay affirming church. Well, if you're allowing them to participate in any capacity there without having them repudiate their sinful ways, which is what happens with many militants in our day and age who want to legitimize the concept, the erroneous idea, unbiblical concept of homosexual Christianity or Christian uh, Christian homosexuality, however you want to say it, which is un completely unbiblical. And Merritt and Canfield and Reed and people like Matthew Vines would attempt to propagate this idea. But I came up with another idea because we need to showcase how truly militant these people are. So instead of providing my own thoughts on the matter, I think I would allow what I would denote to be the homosexual third right to speak for themselves. Because we know that charlatans and demagogues, they never explicitly speak from their hearts. Uh, they never denote what their true intentions are, what their true motivating factor is. They selectively employ terminologies in order to fly under the radar, as it were. So I would like to read certain portions of this joint statement by Josh Canfield and Reed Kelly and allow the Fuhrer of the homosexual third right to interpret for us, the viewers, what it actually is that their motivating force is in their participation, active participation, and what they call dialogue between themselves, the homosexual community, and Hillsong is. Due to our openness and very public appearance together on CBS's Survivor, we have been in conversation with Hillsong New York City's lead pastors regarding the church's non-LGBT affirming stance. Hillsong has many campuses around the world, many in places where gay marriage is now legal. So this has been an ongoing dialogue, trying to figure out 
how and where we, as a part of the LGBT community, fit in. Interpretation? Then, als unsere Partei gerade sieben Mann hoch war, brach sie schon zwei Grundsätze aus. Erstens, sie wollte eine wahrhaftige Weltanschauungspartei sein. Und zweitens, sie wollte daher kompromisslos die einzige Macht und alleinige Macht in Deutschland. Several days ago, some faceless, end-of-days blogger decided to attack us in our church for allowing us to serve when we are unrepentantly embracing our sin as homosexuals. Sadly, yet unsurprisingly, most super conservative news sources picked it up and ran with it, giving this man's voice worldwide amplification it never should have had. Not to mention, it worked up Christian communities around the world, as many look to our church as a model of modern Christianity to be emulated. Interpretation? Der musste als Partei in der Minorität bleiben, weil wir die wertvollsten Elemente des Kampfes und des Opfersinns in der Nation mobilisierten, die zu allen Zeiten nicht die Mehrheit, sondern die Minderheit ausgemacht haben. This has now forced our church to globally reaffirm their hard stance as a non-LGBT affirming institution and disallow any gays from being in a position of leadership within the church. It's been frustrating and a bit crushing that one crazy person could interfere so easily with the healthy and steady dialogue we've been having, but in a new world of social media and instant exposure, we are left unsurprised. Interpretation? Das deutsche Volk ist glücklich. In dem Bewusstsein, dass die ewige Flucht der Erscheinungen nunmehr endgültig abgelöst wurde von einem ruhenden Pol. All this being said, you may ask, why are you staying somewhere that doesn't fully accept you? This leaves us with a tough decision. If we as gays pack up, and leave every church we feel less than welcomed in or where we feel spiritual resistance, how will there ever be growth? Interpretation? Der sich als Träger seines besten Blutes fühlen und dieses Wissen zur Führung der Nation erhoben hat und entschlossen ist, diese Führung zu behalten, wahrzunehmen und nicht herabzugehen. Many try to discredit biblical scholars and laymen alike, who have shifted their stance from non-affirming to LGBT affirming by saying the only reason they have changed their mind is because they know a gay person. Interpretation. Neben die herrliche, ruhmreiche Armee, den alten, stolzen Waffenträger unseres Volkes, die nicht minder traditionsgefestigte politische Führung der Partei treten und dann werden Diese beiden Einrichtungen gemeinsam den deutschen Menschen erziehen und festigen und auf ihren Schultern tragen den deutschen Staat, das deutsche Reich. So there you have it, folks. Explicitly and plainly spoken to those of us that want to know the true motivations of the militants of the LGBT movement among us and how they would want to infiltrate the churches and redefine what the scriptures have to teach about homosexuality coming to a church near you. This has been Gio from the Red Letters Dialogues. Thank you for viewing. Remember to visit our website, redlettersdialogues.com, redlettersdialogues.com. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comment field below. Or if you feel the need to write us a dissertation, please write us info at redlettersdialogues.com. Until the next edition, may the Lord shine his face upon you in Godspeed.